Hi guys, welcome to a new video on the CBI channel. In this tutorial series we are sending emails through our Django application with Gmail. In the first video of this tutorial series we focused on the configuration of our Google account, our Django application and sending basic emails. In the second video of the tutorial I showed you how to add HTML templates to your emails, uh, which made our emails look a lot nicer for the user. In this video, our focus will be on passing user variables from our models into our email, so the email will be customized to the recipient. Today we'll be making three changes to our code. We will start by creating a user in our app, and also adding some additional user information inside of our admin portal. Next, we are going to change our view to Python to add some variables from our models to our code. And lastly, we will pass those variables to our email template and test whether everything is working the way that we are expecting. Let's start off by creating a user inside of our application. Uh, and we can do that through our terminal. So inside of our terminal on the command line, I'm going to type in python manage.py create super user. When I type this command, it's going to ask me a number of questions about that super user before it can create it. So the first one is the username. I'm going to set that to uh, simply test user. Next, it wants my email address, and I copy that one here. This is the email address I'm going to send those emails to in the end, which is j3 j302 ema2. Password. And it wants the addition of the same password. And now my super user has been created successfully. So I've started my server again, and now that we have created our, our user, I want to add some additional information to that user record. So I go to my localhost 8000 slash admin, and I'm going to here. Usually you need to log in first, but I've just did that. You can check on the user panel and you can see the user that we've just created. Um, and one of the things that I want to give this user is a first name and a last name because we don't have that yet. So I'm just going to call this user John Doe and I'm going to change my username as well to John Doe and I'm going to go down and save it. So now I'm going to make some changes to our views that by file so that when the user receives this email this welcome text is specified uh, with their full name, except when they're not in our database. And also this button will go right to our application. So let's move over to our views.py file here. And we start by importing the user model from Django. So that is from Django.contrib.auth.models. We're going to import user. Next thing that we need to do is actually identify whether this user is inside of our email or not. We do that by stating if user dot objects dot filter. Now we're going to check whether email matches with the email from our recipient. And if that exists, then we're going to change the text, the text at the top of it. So I can first say user is, and then again we're going to use user objects, but we can change it to get. And the reason that this is filter is because it exists only uh, works with filter. And we're going to construct a uh, welcome message. That welcome message is starting with me saying welcome. And then I want to add space. I want to specify the user's first name in a string. So I say user first name. I, then again, I'm going to add a space and then I'll do the string user the last name. So now our message will be welcome, use first name, use last name. Now let's uh, also do another plus and end with connection. And just as a little bit of context, you can see here inside of our Django admin portal that uh, we just filled in the first name and the last name, and these are the variables that I also use inside of my welcome message. So that's actually where they came from. Now, of course, if the user is not inside our database, we also need to have a welcome message. And this is just going to be equal to, you have 
been published in this app. In my template, I also want to display the link to our application. Now, of course, you can hard code this inside of your HTML template, but I'm just going to choose to have a separate variable called link app. That is going to be equal to our local host in this instance. So I'm just going to go back here and just copy the first link that I have seen there, pasting it in so we have at least a full string of sort of HTTP. And I'm just going to shorten it because we simply want to go to our home page. All right. Now to actually get these variables inside of our uh, HTML message, we need to add something called context. That is nothing more than a simple variable which specifies for each one what it means. So first thing I can do is say um, that welcome message is going to be equal to welcome message and link app is going to be equal to link app. And now we can add this context to our HTML message. So simply say context is equal to context. And now we will know that these variables will be passed in inside of our HTML message. So the last thing we're actually missing now is a reference to these variables inside of our HTML message. So what we need to do is go to that HTML message and specify welcome message and link app inside of there. So go to email.html and we need to find where the welcome message is inside of this big block of code. Now that's going to be quite tricky so I'm just going to go back for a second to my test email and I specify welcome board name. That's where our welcome message must be. So I'm just going to do a control F say search for welcome aboard name. Perfect. So I'm going to replace this complete string here. I'm going to have two curly brackets and then specify our message. And this text here is just going to remain the same. You can change it if you want, but for now, for me, that is fine. And here you can see that we have a button block. So I'm assuming that, that is what it does. Let's see. Okay, so here I see the link to my website. And here I see it again. So I probably need to pass it in over there. So right now it's a link to that particular website, but it needs to be a link to my website, to my app. So it needs to be link app. I believe that is what we call it. Let's call it briefly. Yeah, I call it link app. Okay, perfect. So now I'm going to save this. And then now when I send that email from uh, an account that is inside of our database, it should display our welcome message um, with the user's first name and last name. And if they're not in the database, they should display you have been advised to use our app. And in both cases, um, yeah, our, our link of the app should go to our local host 8000. So we are back inside of our browser. And let's now test whether my code uh, works. So I saved all of my changes and in the email address I'm now going to paste in the email for which I know that it has an account inside of our database. So it should provide a first name and a last name in the title, but let's see. So we click on submit and we see that a row has been added here, which is a good sign. And I also see that I have received a new email. And when I look at the email, I see welcome and the first name and the last name including the exclamation point. So this is working the way I expected. Also, the button is showing correctly. And if I click it, it goes to my local home state thousand. So it goes back into my app. So it seems to work fine. Now let's see the test for my other email as well. I'm just going to send it to the email, but actually sending the email as well. So it's going to send the email to itself. Because this one is not inside of my database. If I click on submit, my record has been added. And let's see if I get in here. Give it a moment. There we go. We see an email from me. And it says, You have been invited to use our app. So it actually shows a different text based on 
what we are entering as the welcome message. So that is actually all. Uh, you can use these type of codes for passing your variables extremely well, especially when you're sending uh, tokens for, for example, password resets, or you just want to have activation emails that are a little bit more customized to the user. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this series, and we will be back with a new video very soon. Thank you very much.